Now, the interesting thing about the Beauty and the Beast live action remake is that the costume designers clearly knew what a historically accurate Belle could look like, as we see in the scene when Madame de la Grande Bouche dresses Belle as a princess. <laughs> That's a row balla frickin' Francaise. If you kind of, you know, tilt your head to the side, close one eye and squint with the other, it's really clearly a row balla Francaise. And that got me thinking. A dangerous pastime. I know. I really want to make a historically accurate bell costume. So then I set to work on my actual design. Now, I already had the simplicity pattern in mind for the dress itself, but I came to the realization that unlike Emma Watson, who refused to wear corset or stays during her performance because corsets actually impede my ability to do accents, which explains Little Women. Anyways, unlike Watson, I realised that if I'm going to make this, I need some undergarments. So I got to work reading about what kind of stays I could do that were historically accurate before thinking to myself, wait, I've done this before. And indeed, I have. In my Marie Antoinette corset making video, I made a pair of stays from 1760, which would be perfect. So I used the pattern for those, which if you're interested, is from volume two of Mandy Barrington's Stays and Corsets. I decided that for the stays, I wanted to paint them in the style of the opening of the 1991 film, which is the bit where they reiterate that the prince has turned into a beast because you can't see past the fuggliness of the old lady. Which, side note, why does the prince always look like he's about to sneeze in these scenes? <laughs> <laughs> so I needed a fabric that was going to be able to withstand being painted on but also be thick enough to be made into a corset so I went with two layers of this beige heavyweight calico and with all that finally explained we can start our sewing <laughs> Okay, so all I'm doing here is taking my dry, crusty old hands and pinning down and adding seam allowances to my three pattern pieces in preparation for them to be cut out, which I'm going to do now. You need to have two of each pattern piece as we will be wedging the boning between these layers and I always find it adds to the tutorial if you dangle your hair in the way of what you're doing at all times. Then you can decide which layer will be your inner and your outer. With calico it doesn't really matter as there's no pattern uh, and then you begin pinning your side panels to the front piece and side panels to the back pieces. Oh yeah! And then you just sew down those pieces that you just pinned at a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. Guys, I've just spent like half an hour trying to do my makeup to look, you know, like Belle's dress, like the yellow and the gold. And then I was looking at it and I was like, mm, this is not actually that flattering. It kind of looks like I'm jaundiced. But then I was like, that's kind of historically accurate, right? You know, like in Belle's time, they would have had like the plague and probably jaundice, you know, all of the illnesses. So historically accurate all the way through. We stand historical accuracy in this house. Kidding, I actually really don't care that much. As long as the costumes properly add to the storyline and don't look like they've had a pound on budget. <clears throat> Wonder Woman. So then I used my original pattern pieces to work out where the boning channels should be and drew those on with a heat erasable pen before pinning the two corset layers together and sewing down those drawn on lines. These are going to be the little pockets for the boning to go into. Bonjour! Bonjour, 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 bonjour. So it's actually the next day now, and that means we can begin painting the stays. So I've been very original with this, and I've literally just printed out the scene, the stained glass scene from the beginning of the film. And what we're gonna do is trace around that scene and then trace it onto the corset. So let's trace this thing out. That was, that was too far down, it's there. Once you've fully traced out the design onto the paper, you can tape and very professionally trace your design onto the actual fabric. It is the grand reveal, huh? Then I basically just traced around everything in black biro and guys, this took so long, like in the video, it's taking like two minutes, but in real life, oh my golly. I finally finished putting in the black, like outlining it, and on the areas where there was like blank I just put in some extra stained glass pattern and then here where there was extra I just put in some roses 
I've left this bit blank for now because I'm not sure what to do with it. Like I'm not sure whether I want to continue the pattern up or just paint it like solid gold or something. And that's commenced a whole lot of painting, which I feel like can be edited in one of two ways. Firstly, we've got the kind of cottage core aesthetic, the Studio Ghibli music playing in the background. This is an act of self-care. And then we've got the oh dear god, the acrylic and sharpie fumes are burning into my lungs. I've been painting for a solid eight hours without food or water and no wonder the beast ended up looking like that in his final transformation scene. The animators were probably so tired of drawing at this point that they just didn't care. The things I do for these videos. Moving swiftly on, I really just painted for hours and I used normal acrylic paints mixed with this Liquitex acrylic medium which makes the acrylic a bit more flexible and so easier to work with on the fabric and I really really like this. It turned out much better than expected, like it was still kind of thick because it's acrylic but still movable. I have finally finished this day's they look like this. I feel like they actually look better in camera than they do in real life. In real life, they kind of resemble a big pizza slice. So now we're gonna go around with this fine Sharpie around everything that I've done just to highlight it and make it look more like a stained glass window. And then for the back sections I decided I wanted each side to be the sunny stained glass and then the thundery stained glass scenes that we see in the film. So I just sketched these out with my own crusty hands and began painting those too. So if you've lost track of where we're at with the painting of these days, don't worry, I have too, mostly because of the Sharpie fumes intoxicating me for several days at a time and my lungs crying out for help. I was literally doing a workout yesterday, like for once, and I was doing a HIIT workout and my lungs were burning. Like, I felt like I could taste blood, which is kind of normal for me, actually. I've just realised there's white acrylic paint in my hair. Is this what happens to, like, crafters? You don't actually get grey hair, you just paint it in yourself and that's how it works. <laughs> Yep, so that was basically another full day of, you guessed it, painting. Flash. Ah, savior of the universe. Do, 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 do. Once I'd done all of the painting, I could finally put the boning in and I used plastic zip ties this time because they're cheaper, but I wouldn't really advise this. They didn't really quite give me the strength I was looking for. And if like Gaston, your aim in life is to resemble a barge, you can either do this the traditional method, i.e. eating five dozen eggs a day, or use some strong ass boning. Sorry, I really wanted to include that Gaston skit in there and the three last brain cells are failing me. And then I could paint that top section I'd left blank, so I did this gold star blue background look, which ended up looking kind of like the European flag. And all I can say is EU nostalgia takes many forms. Then I made some bias spining strips, which you guys have seen me make in almost every single video, and used my edge footer to sew those down onto the raw edges of the stays. It's done and now it's time to bang holes into things. Get your mind out of the gutter. Ooh. I would actually compare the process of putting eyelets in stays or corsets as similar to childbirth. You know, you have a child, you go through the trauma of childbirth and then five years go by and then you want another child, forgetting that it was awful the first time. It's true though, not that I know, I don't have children. So I used a four millimetre wide eyelets and also my usual pyrem fabric hole punching device, a hammer and some little wooden blocks so that I didn't damage the floor. And then we were on the home run boys. So I painted the bias binding I'd put on before gold while being an aesthetic little bish and watching my neighbor Totoro. And then to finish it all off, I made some gold corset laces just by ironing strips of gold fabric in the same way I do with bias binding and then sewing them down. Oh yeah, I also had a donut cause you've got to get your five a day in. Yeah. 